Good morning. It is a Tuesday morning. We've got uh, some weather to talk about. Not a lot. There's this thing on Wednesday. Mm, it, it'll, I'll show you in the models. It'll probably put down a little bit of moisture somewhere, especially in the North Bay or north of Cape Mendocino. You guys in Point Arena, you're a quarter of an inch, maybe a half inch. Crescent City, maybe an inch. In other words, the next few days, everything's going to be north. So you guys in Southern California, Central California, Central Bay Area, it's all going to be north of Santa Rosa in terms of activity. And, and they'll get some rain up there. Pacific Northwest, bam, you're getting a ton of rain. There's an atmospheric river that's focused on you. You can kind of see it here. This is the system we're tracking for Wednesday. And it's just going to tail off and move through the area. So this is the San Jose State University. They have an awesome weather page. Today we're going to do something kind of different, but I think will be fun. Is we're going to go weather right off the top. <clears throat> which we kind of did, but then we'll look, we'll look real quick at the model. And then we're going to go look at the alert cams. We're going to look at some surf. We're going to look at some skiing because it's ski week. And by the way, I take exception to the term, to that ski week. Because I grew up in paradise. Like, ski week might behind. I mean, we couldn't afford to ski. I mean, my parents could. My dad's a veterinarian. But all my friends, nobody could. Have. Ski week. I mean, really, for most people I grew up with, and for even myself, ski week, even when I was at Berkeley, we didn't have a ski week there when I was at Cal, but... You meant I just could pick up more shifts at the restaurant, right? So, but I mean, it's a time off. It's awesome. But I think it's a little bit of this to say ski week because not every community. I'm, I know my boys in Orville don't have a ski week. Uh, maybe they do. I don't know. I, times have changed. Okay, so uh, here's what the system we're watching. This is for Wednesday, but I'm not worried about it. Here is San Francisco. This is how it looks outside right now for most of us. Kind of throughout the state, Northern California, that, you know, Northern California for me sort of starts at, it's all, you know, subjective, but there's Mount Tam. So you're into Marin County, into the Marin Headlands, kind of from there up. That's where the activity is going to be in terms of rainfall. And even then, it's going to be relatively light and relatively quick. So let's take a look at the model run. Here we are, loop around us. Click, 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 click. You know what you're looking at, right? Which is awesome. You're looking, you know, that's rain, potential rain. You know, that's wind. So you can see where the low is because of the pressure grading gets tighter as you get closer to the low center, uh, closer to the, to the steep valley. And if it's a topographic map. So there it is. So that's Wednesday mid-morning. Okay. So this isn't a super granular model, like I said, like eight miles by eight miles, but it'll get you, it gets you going. I mean, I, I don't think this is anything we need to worry about in terms of anything other than nuisance stuff if you're a painter or a, to pour on concrete. Uh, Saturday. Oh, and by the way, I got the time up here. It's hard to see. I know. I know. I'm, gonna, I'm still working on figuring out how to code this thing so you can see it better, the time codes. And then you just see some drive-by stuff. And then somewhere way out here in fantasy land, we got a little something there. That looks juicy, but heck, that's the first, the end of the first week of March. Hello. So now we look at the rainfall accumulation. You know what you're looking at? GFS again. Mm. And by the way, I did the Mark Thompson show yesterday, and I appreciate all you guys. I mean, Mark's, I, 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 I think you're, if you're with us on the show, it's a podcast, but Mark, I, he basically got, got my career going, kickstarted it back in the 80s. Um, a huge mentor to me. He didn't. He doesn't even know it really, because I was literally just an urchin, and he was. Mark was, and still is, but in the Bay Area back then was he such a celebrity, and he was such a professional. Like I, you know, so I could go on and on, but but thank you, you guys, for showing up. I mean, that's like uh, 100 new subscribers, and it's a slow growing thing. This YouTube thing just slow. It's not like TV. It's not like Facebook. It's not like anything. It's slow, but I kind of like it because what I'm what's happening is it filters out. The people that aren't really in that are just kind of going for the flashy stuff you guys are like you're in you're in that's why we're doing models right now and that's why we're going to show you some other stuff and do a little california history here okay so anyway this is accumulation right so we know what that means so this is just over the next seven eight days how much rain we're going to get and you see where the bullseye is there's your atmospheric river up there right so this is this weekend and look at crescent city my friends up there come in at over three inches point arena you're in over an inch and a half uh fort bragg you're in at an inch and as I go through time, that's kind of it. Except right here, the 21st, it looks like a little something happens, right? So that may be some. We'll keep an eye on that. But for the most part there, that's what we're looking at. So what did I just say? I basically just said we've got scattered rain showers showing up as we go to um, Wednesday, mainly north. And very light and don't change your plans. 
Uh, Palisades Tahoe, Tahoe. Um, formerly known as Squaw Valley. They changed the name. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, it would take, there was a lot of fussing over changing the name, just so you know. I know a lot of the local kids, not that they wanted it to change, but a lot of the old timers, the really old timers that built the ski resort were like, hey, this is what we've always called it. So, you know, and that's that's all a whole nother thing. It is ski week, and I didn't mean to be, but I just always, even when I was a kid, I skied. I grew up skiing. My, I, my parents were, my dad's a veterinarian. We were fairly well to do in a really poor community not really poor but compared to now it was pretty poor um and we never called it ski week oh that that was uh, palisades this is heavenly valley and this is north star pardon me and these cameras i can't control but you can see the people out kind of fun to see all the outfits it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful ski week if you will and it is busy it was a busy busy week for the lake tog right? and one of the things i learned about the ski industry is they make most of their money right around now from Christmas through President's Day. That, I mean, and that's their money. Everything on either side is gravy. They make the Icon Passes, I shouldn't say it. The Icon Passes have changed things because people buy it before. But in the day, I don't know the exact, but in the day, the, um, the money was made during this time. And I, th I suspect it still is. Here we are. I've loaded up a bunch of cameras and I have since, oh, Kirkwood, nice. Kirkwood's not, you know what's nice about Kirkwood? A little further south, they little, get a little more snow because there's a lot more, a little more water um, available for the lower latitudes and typical extra tropical storms that come in. There's the moisture content tends to be, can, can be a little further south, right? Because it's closer to the warmer, uh, to the, it's closer to the lower latitudes, higher humidity. And so this is Kirkwood, beautiful day there. And uh, the weather couldn't be better for ski week. We are now to the surf and turf. We're doing the surf now. And <laughs> huh, I'm going to use that. Um, this is Ocean Beach. It's big. It's 8 to 12. It's going to stay kind of big. It goes down a little tomorrow. It's, it hovers the 8 to 10 foot range really for a few days. And that's along the coast. There are high surf advisories down around Point Conception and down into Southern California. We'll look at that. Uh, so Ocean Beach, not to be trifled with. This time of year is super scary. Most dangerous beach in the world. I pit that, and I say that because I'm sure there's more dangerous beaches somewhere, but Ocean Beach most dangerous because of its proximity to a million plus people that don't really swim. San Franciscans are not known for their swimming abilities. My parents grew up in San Francisco. None of their friends could swim. They just, right? They had Fleischecker Pool, that big giant swimming pool. Look that up sometime. They had Sutro Bass. Um, I actually ice skated at the Sutro Bass back in the early 60s, believe it or not. They turned it into an ice skating rink, um, but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very you know it's a very dangerous beach because of where it's located. So Ocean Beach, everybody, and live picture here. This is Hawaii. This is Sunset Beach. It's eight to ten, eight to twelve there, and it's going to be big in Hawaii the next few days as well. There's a few folks out. Sunset Beach, very local. It's a lot like Pipeline. Here's the peak. Here are the boys and girls, and they. They wouldn't be that stoked if I paddled out right now. They just wouldn't. They, I'd see all the, how everybody's sitting. There's a pecking order, which I love about surfing. So the peak is kind of here. I'm not watching it. Maybe there's a West Bowl here right now. Maybe this is in. But anyway, whoever's sitting furthest up the point, this is the point here. You can see where it's shallow. Whoever's sitting up furthest up the point is your alpha. Whoever's sitting way back in here, that's me. I mean, that's me staying out of the way because you maybe get a scrap. You'll maybe snag a corner but you're not getting in the way. This is Leadbetters. This is down south of Point Conception, down in Santa Barbara area. My son went to um, the, G the JC there and then transferred to UC Santa Barbara. And they spent, I mean, can you imagine being a 19 year old boy living, they lived in apartments up here and they would scramble down the hill and they would run out and surf way too much, way too much. He did great in school. He works for Jamie O'Brien now. We talked about that, but um, it's just, a, you know, Santa Barbara. Oh my God, he was down there during COVID. Can you imagine COVID? Because what happened was the kids, he and all of his friends, they just stayed. So everybody else hunkers down in their caves, you know, and it was not the most fun, you know, except for what, Tiger King or whatever we were doing. But he and his bro and his friends, girls, guys, everybody, they hunkered down in Isla Vista and spent a year and a half, two years going to classes on TV and having the time of their lives. I literally to this day say he had the best COVID experience of anybody I've ever met. This is 
UC San Diego Alert Cam. This is down towards Mammoth, and we are looking out over the hills. The camera moved on I me. Mean, that's what I've lost here. But you're looking. You're in the Southern Sierra Nevada, and you can see it's just beautiful. And, you know, I. That's what I was saying the other day, right? About look at where you live. Look where you live. And it's one of these days. We should go around and look at these cameras. Well, I'm not going to do it right now. Let's do it together. Because if you're still here, so this is the home page, and this li links on my website. So I'm going to go. These are that's the current pictures. But watch this. I load this bad boy up, and then I back out. And now you're going to see. Those are all cameras, man. Those are all cameras. Those are. It's California, right? But look at that. And they're mainly used for fires. But isn't that awesome? I just think that. I mean, I play around these cameras. They're so. So very, very useful for, um, for what we do here. Weather, I've always said it. Weather is about, when I show you models, I'm showing you something that's, the weather balloon went up five hours ago. The calculations were done seven hours ago and everything's changed. Live camera, nothing, not everything's changed. You can go, oh, there's, there's an inversion in the uh, valley out by Wairika. This is in Northern California now. That's Mount Shasta under the clouds. We're kind of north of Mount, north and west of Mount Shasta, but there's a little bit of an inversion. Cold air sinks. There's the valley. This right now, right now, it's awesome. I mean, that's amazing to me. If it, in my day, and then this is Mount Shasta trying to come into the clear, a little fur, further south. Um, in my day, we used to like when I was talking about Mark Thompson. We used to, I, my job with Mark was I would get on the telephone, and I would um, call 35 numbers of people, old ladies fire departments, fire stations, cop shops. They had thermometers, temperatures, official, they were the official weather keepers. And I'd call them and go, hi, low for the day, this is Bill Martin. And then you'd end up talking to them for a while. It would take two hours to get through those phone calls, but that's, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, we would call, make physical phone calls and go, hey, what's the temperature today, hi, low. And, we, and they were awesome actually, because they were not, like fire stations were really good. They keep really good weather records. As a matter of fact, if you ever need weather records, go to the local fire station. They usually, I think they still all keep weather records. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very, or when we were looking for fog, we had satellite imagery, but it didn't come off that much. It wasn't that clear. Um, like I mentioned the DIFAX maps the other day, but the, for, in the old days, I would, after I'd make my phone calls about the, ten, the high low for the day in Santa Rosa, they, and talk to <laughs> Louise Halberg, who I loved, about her cat, Louise was awesome. She had a butterfly farm, and I would talk to her because they're, they're you know, they were people who, sorry about that, they were people who were really into weather like we are, like we are, or really into this place. And they, and you would talk, and, and it was awesome. It was really, it was really wonderful. But I would get, my next move would be to get on the phone or a ship to shore radio, because back then it was radios, and you'd try to find, a, 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 if you, in my case, I knew a couple commercial fishermen, and they would go, hey, fog, fair lawns clear fair lawn. So I would know where the fog was. That was huge, right? We didn't have live camera. Well, we kind of did have live cameras, but they were janky for sure. But when you could get any kind of intel from a live happening now, and that's what these alert cameras are. Okay, that's uh, a little different, but uh, I enjoyed it very much. And thank you so much for coming on board, you uh, Mark Thompson people. He's so smart. He's such a smart dude. Mark Thompson, if you get a chance to uh, check out his podcast, he's just a really bright, bright guy. His, I think his parents taught at Yale. He's one of those guys. Okay, I'll see you back here.